And who better to talk space than an astronaut? And what's better than one astronaut? Two astronauts. We've got two astronauts on set with us here in Los Angeles. Peggy Whitson is commanding the upcoming all-private Axiom Mission 2 to the International Space Station. Uh, John Schaffner will be the pilot on the mission. Uh, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. You guys, we're very close right now. We're about to be a whole lot farther away. Uh, tell me, first off, how's the training going? And what's the launch window looking like? Well, the training is going really well. We are nearing the final phases, and so we're pretty jam-packed all the time. We are training not only at NASA for the International Space Station training, we're training at SpaceX, and then, of course, Axiom as well, because we are integrating all aspects from all, all three. And, and the launch window, I know it's no earlier than or no, yeah, well, it's, those things are always tricky. It's getting close. You know, we feel it, you know, it's, it's, it's never a better time to be an astronaut when the mission's right in front of you. So <laughs> the training's fast and furious, but, but it's really, really coming together. Definitely going to be this year. Oh, yeah. We're hoping early May. Early May. All right. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Now, I want to ask, hey, we were just talking about it's SpaceX, you've got NASA, you've got Axiom. Combining all those together, what's what's that like? What's this new this world of, of collaboration between public and private uh, looking like for, for an astronaut that's in training? Well, um, our, our mission is very specific and, uh, you know, relatively short, 12 days long. So we're trying to optimize the training for those, that, those few days that we're going to be up there. But we're learning, we're using these short duration missions, Axiom is, to, to prototype how we're going, going to do it when we have the station uh, building and constructed. I think it's really an exciting time because it shows you, you know, SpaceX has done a phenomenal job getting up commercial crew carriers, and so they're carrying up NASA astronauts, and in our case, uh, private and, and government astronauts are going up to the space station as well. And then there are other uh, companies out there that are trying to do same or similar with either building stations or developing other launch vehicles to get crew into orbit. Now, Commander, you've done this before. Uh, this is your first time to space. What are you constantly asking her? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I've been a student of space flight my whole life. You know, I've enjoyed it. Uh, it's, it's time for me to go, actually. And I've got a great commander. Uh, you know, her record speaks for itself. So I'm, I'm on standby following her lead. You know, we've got a good training group between Axiom and uh, NASA and SpaceX. The collaboration is beautiful. Uh, and it's, it's coming together as a means to get us all headed toward space and in the future. Uh, it's really wonderful. Where do you see space exploration in the next 10, 20 years? 10 and 20 is a little harder to predict, but if you think about, you know, we've been doing this for 60 years, and the last 23 years, we've had human presence in space in low Earth orbit. You know, I'd like to see in 20 years that we would have the same presence uh, beginning on the lunar surface or in a space station orbiting the lunar surface. So, and then beyond that, of course, we need to be exploring other planets, Mars on top of the list. And how about you? Well, um, when I was growing up, I had a lunchbox that had a great image of astro, whatever it was, on the Mars and moon. I think we're, we're headed into an era where that is now real. It's no longer science fiction. We're developing it and we're going to make it happen. So, you know, as a, as a people, we're, we're, space is going to come to us, and we might as well get on and, and start figuring out how to make it work. And this is going to be the second mission uh, with Axiom. Yes. What was the first mission like, and, and what are some of the lessons learned from there? Well, we, we did learn a lot of lessons uh, during the AX-1 mission, and primarily we needed to change some of our uh, focuses in training. Um, everyone is kind of used to training for long-duration missions uh, in some of our worlds, and so we need to train for a shorter-duration mission, much kind of like going back to the shuttle days of, of planning for that much more compact time frame. And so we trained a lot. We changed a lot in the training flow uh, to make us uh, better prepared for this mission, I think. And I'm sure we'll have different things learned after this one, but, you know, as, as long as we're advancing, then we're doing great. And that's the purpose of these precursor missions to our Axiom station, is to get us trained up and ready to go. Uh, when we get uh, the first module, it will be attached to the International Space Station and uh, in 20, late 2025. And from there, we'll grow. And before the ISS deorbits, we'll have uh, the first commercial space station in low Earth orbit. 
Last question for those of you that are watching at home and are like, well, you know, things are changing with the space race. Uh, maybe I can be an astronaut. Uh, what's your biggest advice to somebody that is looking up at the stars and realizing space might be a lot more accessible than, than we once thought a few years ago? Well, if you're already thinking about it, you're probably already half an astronaut. So <laughs> the the process uh, to do that, as Peggy pointed out, is is that's part of what these early missions are about, helping us develop the methodologies to get people into space. And we actually need people that want to consider that. Going back to uh, school kids, you know, education systems, where the educators start speaking to space and about the opportunities that space uh, provides at all levels of careers. And if a child has an interest or a voice that might lend them in that direction, then lean into that. That's what we're trying to encourage here, is demonstrate that it's available and it's working. We build on that mission and we get people to space. I can't wait to see the launch. And thank you so very much for being here. Godspeed, you two. All right, thank you so thank very you much. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.